So about a month ago, we hatched out seven pea chicks until little LOL died from complications from a leg injury. Until about a week ago, the pea chicks started dying. What do you think happened? It looks like you got squished. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Look at it. That's how it was? Yeah. Oh. Darn. And then three days later, the same thing happened again. What happened? Somebody squished a little, these little baby peacocks. So this is not good. We've lost two of our white pea chicks in like four or five days. Something around the nesting box and around our red coaching hen. I don't know. What happened? This is not good. A couple days ago, it was right here. The same deal. And last night it was right here. And so it's plenty warm out here. So they don't need to be getting sat on by the coaching for warmth. It's, it's really warm and these pea chicks are fully feathered but something's happening, so we've got to remove this nest box. We have four that sat on here last night. I came out and checked on them. There were four up here, and then one's up there with the black silky. But for some reason, this nest box is the problem. So we're gonna get it out of here, and hopefully with our final four white pea chicks, we can figure out what's going on. Do you think we should remove the hens, or do you think they're doing a good job? I think they're doing a good job. They're teaching them to scratch and everything, and keep an eye on them otherwise they'd be flying out but I think somebody's sitting on them and squishing them or something's going on so we're gonna keep the hens with them we really like them being parents for them because we're letting them out during the day now and they're they're staying in their area do you think it's an issue with two of them well one one is up top so they're not fighting over the pea chicks the black silky's sitting on the roosting bar with one and the red cochin was sitting with the other and so originally she had five she was sitting with up there and then now two have died this week so now she's down to three with her so man i hope we don't lose any more so weird that they're so fragile yeah never had this happen with chicks this just doesn't happen with chicks but pea chicks are a whole different ball game they seem like they grow up faster but like turkeys they're just really fragile Oh yeah, they're growing their own bees. That's great to see. This is our little tiny swarm that we caught out in the park and they end up growing their own queen. They're definitely hatching out their own bees now, but they're pretty far behind all of the other hives because of how slow of a start they got. But hopefully we can grow them to a good size so they can survive the winter. Lots of beautiful bees growing there in the middle. There she is, there she is. There's our queen moving around right there. Here's our queen, right there. That's our queen bee. We got a little yellow mark on her. See her? Look at how much stuff they have here in their top. It looks oh, like that's honey. That looks like honey, doesn't it? Yeah. Woo! That is so pretty. Do you see that, Eli? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is all honey. We're gonna put a super on top, and that's got a small frames, and so they'll just grow honey in there. How the queen would she just is a little too big for it. So she's not supposed to fit through there, so they just put honey in the top. Oh, uh, yeah. So now we got three boxes there. So the Lego Beehive, we've had now for a little over a year. Last year didn't work out great, but this year it's amazing. We're at a spot where we need to build a second box, and so we just came out to measure it. We've separated some Legos inside the house, and so we're gonna go back, build that second box. Hopefully in the next week we'll have one for them because they need it quick. They've got about half the hive is sitting here outside the hive, so we've got to get that on before they split. So one of the things I want to do is keep an eye on these pea chicks, obviously, but I've got a couple cameras that I put around the property that we had gotten in the last few months and they're cellular based, so I can pull footage from anywhere. I set one over here at the pea chick house last night, but I want to start keeping an eye on them, try to see what's going on or see if I can prevent something from happening if there's an issue with these mama hens. Here at the Indio Gigantes, and we've got these really big cucumbers. And of course, we've got a lot of little ones that we'll eat or we'll can them and turn into pickles. But let's see if these guys will eat this if I'll break it up for them. This one's just a little bit too big for us. There you go, guys. You wanna try some? These Indio Gigantes, if you didn't see us hatch them out, they're the world's tallest chicken breed. And so they're getting pretty close to full size, which is about three feet tall. So some of these guys, like this guy, he's pretty gigantic. Let's see if they'll try out this, this food here. 
And I should tell you that these guys have been super friendly. We've had a lot of people that were worried that they're going to get aggressive, and they still might. They're only four, maybe five months old now, so there's still time for that. They're just starting to crow, and they're not really breeding yet, and they'll probably become more aggressive when they get to the breeding age. So far, these guys have been really friendly to be around. It's hot out here today, isn't it? Today's video is sponsored by Factor. We just got our shipment. Let's see what we got. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Casio and Pepe. Our team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. And then we got our tropical fruit smoothies. All right, we're gonna read some of these to the boys and see which ones they wanna pick out today for lunch. With Factor, there is no prep and no mess. Factor cuts out stressful meal planning and extensive prepping so meals come together in minutes, taking the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I'm gonna go with shredded chicken taco bowl. That one's turkey chili and zucchini. I need it. You want turkey chili? Yes. A Casio a puppy. All right, it's all yours. And so the fun thing and the nice thing about these meals is that it only takes two minutes to heat up. And so when we're busy working outside doing chores in the morning or working on farm projects, we can come right in, get our lunch ready for us and the boys real quick. Factor supports wholesome eating made simple. Meal plans offer variety with a rotating weekly menu of 25 plus meal options and Factor Plus add-ons. Choose your favorite meals or let Factor craft your order based on your taste preferences and meal history. Spicy? I like it a little spicy. Try some of the noodles. Oh yeah, those creamy noodles. Mm. Those good? That's very good. Mm. Is that good? Yes. Good zucchini, good deal. I've got cheesy chicken, bacon, mushrooms, and broccoli. It's really good. All right, I've got the queso fundido here. Looks like it's got some jalapenos. It's gonna be spicy. Mm, that's super good. So just go over to go.factor75.com slash whitehouse120 and use the code whitehouse120 for $120 off. That's go.factor75.com slash whitehouse120 and use the code White House 120 for $120 off. It's delicious. So a day after we put the camera into the pea chick coop, we saw one of the little pea chicks starting to get lethargic. Here he is a couple hours later, not even opening his eyes. And just 15 minutes after that, he's laying down and we didn't see him move again. <gasps> and then Eli found him that night when we went out to do chores. We just put the camera up to catch the peacocks to see what's happening, and we lost another peacock. What is going on? Got three up there. They're just fine this morning. Gosh, this is bananas. Man, I don't, I don't get it. They're all four were running around. All four. Well, this is frustrating. I thought we had it figured out with the nesting box and. Maybe they were just smashing them on the, on the nesting box, but my goodness, the third one in less than a week. This is not good. So there's kind of three phases that I've gone through on this situation. When the first pea chick died, of course we're bummed, but I thought, hey, it's an accident. It probably was just a mistake or the, the red cochin. She just sat on it wrong and it was something that just could have happened to anything. And then a couple days later, a second one died and we, at that point, we're thinking, okay, we, we've got to fix this situation. We've got to figure out what went wrong, what can we fix? So we chose to remove the nesting box, and that seemed to help. We've gone three, four days without one dying, and there were, there were no issues at that point. All right, I'll put her down. And then when a third one died last night, we thought, oh no, this is not good. This is, this is a nightmare at this point that something's going on, either a disease or weak pea chicks where there's an issue. We gotta figure out what's going on before it devastates all of them. And so the one thing we can think of right now besides disease, which if it, disease is in there, they're gonna die. I don't think we'd be able to save it at this point if they're passing around a disease. If it's weakness, is it weak because of a feed that we're giving them? Are they, is the water too hot or is it just too hot outside in general? It's getting about 100 degrees all week. And so this is the one thing we can fix outside of getting them in some kind of air conditioning, which we just don't have the ability to do. Our, our house is the only thing air conditioned, so we can't get them in a small house. And so we can bring them over to shade. And so this pear tree is a great spot that we like to put small groups of birds in the summer because it, it's very well shaded. 
good grass. We hope this might alleviate some issues with hot water. Of course, we change it in the morning, but even just an hour or two in, some of the, the outside waters will get really hot. Somehow that one was so weak yesterday, and we just couldn't figure out why that one died. This is what we're gonna go with to, to figure out if this will keep the last three alive. I don't know what to do after this if one dies. They might be passing around disease at that point, but the hens are fine. They're not dying, so what's wrong with the pea chicks? The other two died at night, and I'm pretty sure it was from just being squished under the, the little red cochin. Pretty sure that's what caused it. But this one dying in the middle of the day, it just seems to be either heat related or some kind of weakness. Some of our, we've had baby turkeys that, that die just because they're so weak. And as they get bigger and older, they, they're much stronger and they do just fine. They're very hardy, but man, these pea chicks just, they're fragile. Well, will this solve the problem? I hope so. I don't know what else to do. Have you ever had anything like this happen? With me chickens, but not the peacocks. Because we had two with Blue and Bell and they made it. Mm -hmm. We've never had this many die like this. Right. I'm in here hatching out some button quail. We're just trying to get our numbers up outside. And look at this, we just had our fourth little one hatch on this hatch. They're so tiny, they're like, just barely bigger than a size of a quarter. All right, I'm gonna get him back into the incubator. Just wanted to show you him real quick. Hopefully a few more hatch out on this little hatch. Hope you're all right. Oh. He's sitting on the egg. What? How oh, weird. He's sitting on an egg. What are you doing? I wonder if the hen was sitting out with him. I don't know. Here, let me put him up on this. Maybe just got lost. Phew. Close call. Oh, man. Have a good night, guys.